I keep wanting to call this movie pneumonia. I think it's just the way it sounds. Did you know there's a P in pneumonia? Why? What's up, Netflix fans? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking the brand new animated film. I'm wearing a hat because my hair looks terrible. Let's do it. When a knight in a futuristic medieval world is framed for a crime he didn't commit, the only one who can help him prove his innocence is Demona, a mischievous teen who happens to be a shape-shifting creature he's sworn to destroy. This movie is rated PG. But there is violence, action, thematic elements, language, root humor. There's a lot in this PG movie that makes it feel like it could be rated PG-13. And I look at the animation style. That's what jumps out immediately. I think of another Netflix project. It's... Arcane. Arcane was one of the greatest, coolest things that I had seen on the platform at the time, and a lot of that had to do with the animation. And it's not the exact same, but it's very similar. It's computer graphic animation, but it has this cartoon saloon look and feel to the stylistic movements and the brush strokes, the way that animation is coming to life in a digital way, but a way that also kind of feels like a throwback. So it's a nice amalgamation of the two. I think the ongoing theme with animation this year is... They're going outside the box, whether it be Elemental, Spider-Verse, don't need to say anything there, uh, but this film does kind of the same thing, and I really like that. I enjoy that. It allows the visuals to push the story forward, even when we're diving into cliche and predictable territory with the narrative itself, and I'm seeing so much love for this film, rightfully so, because it is, in its own way, a beautiful story. A lot of it has to do with the themes that are in this picture. Acceptance is probably the main theme here. We have a character in Nimona who is, well, an outcast. I love the moment where we get to see her backstory come to life, and it's played out in a very quiet, subtle but beautiful way. This flashback is one of the absolute best parts of the film, and because she is a shapeshifter, because there is this magic in her, she is looked at by everyone else as a freak, in a way, right? And so a lot of people who are watching this film, you know, especially if you've ever had that feeling of like, I don't belong, I'm not the popular kid in school, there's things about me that make me distinct and unique, you're going to watch this and you're going to say, I can relate to this character played by Chloe Grace Moretz, who does a great job. The voice acting in general here is really, really strong. I think without these voice actors, without these actors at play here, I don't know if I would have responded as much to the characters, but that plus the visuals plus the themes that I was just talking about makes her a great character. But you could also say the same thing for Ballister, Ballister Boldheart, played by Riz Ahmed, and Riz Ahmed's voice, man, it's just so smooth, it's just so good, but he is also an outcast because he has been framed for a murder that he did not commit. There has been a murder, and you are a suspect. So everyone is looking for him, he's on the run, but he's also trying to prove his innocence, so he teams up with this character who the kingdom sees as a monster, and we have these two outcasts who are just trying to prove themselves, and that's great. That makes for an interesting story, and when it's focused on that, I believe it works extremely well. Now, there are a couple moments in here where the story that I was just talking about kind of slows down and becomes less of the focus, and the script is just, well, allowing these characters to have some fun, but at the same time, we're not moving anywhere with the story, and we're just kind of stagnant, and uh, they're using those stagnant moments to insert the more childish jokes, the jokes that I didn't respond as much to. Now, that is going towards the target audience, but when you have moments like that combined with moments that are clearly for adults, sometimes it can be a beautiful mixture, other times it doesn't work quite as well, and I felt that way a few times throughout this film, so I wasn't as attached to those moments, but when it starts to amp back up and you have that beautiful combination and we really dive into these two main characters and the heart behind what they're going through and the emotion behind that, man, it's going to make for some uh, some sad audience members. You're going to watch this and maybe shed a tear at the I don't know. It's beautiful. I also want to talk about the setting here, and I've never really seen anything like this in an animated movie. You have this medieval setting, but it's also futuristic. It's like this Blade Runner-esque world, obviously less dreary, but we have knights and queens and kings, and it's this crazy combination that amplifies the story itself, but also makes everything vastly more interesting because the situations we could have been in are much more entertaining because we're combining those two crazy things that don't feel like they belong, but at the same time they do. I'm, I'm talking a lot. You combine that with the backstory of Ballister and how he becomes this knight before the fallout actually happens, and this fascinating other character that's like a combination of Beast Boy and Doric, you know, the character from Dungeons and Dragons. The shape-shifting element is really cool. 
at first it looked silly because she's all one color and I'm like this kind of I don't know if this fits with the really cool style here, but as the movie goes, the more you start to appreciate it, and there's one moment with her shape-shifting that I thought was just fantastic. I want to talk about the trajectory, the build-up to the end, and the end. The trajectory of this story is predictable, and that's my one big issue with this movie is I knew where it was going. I felt as if I have seen a similar story or many similar stories to this before, and I didn't quite feel that connection that I needed to at the end of the second, going into the third act. There are about 30 minutes there where I'm just kind of sitting and waiting on the next important thing to happen with the story itself, the moments where they're in hiding, and some moments when they're on the run aren't quite as entertaining as scenes earlier in the film. Now, when we get to the ending itself, it absolutely does its job there and ends this film on a high note. And for Netflix, I think this is a win in terms of animation. And I also believe it's one that the entire family can watch once again. Jokes for adults and jokes for kids. So before I give you my score, if you enjoyed this video and you want to drop a thumbs up, that would be awesome. What's your favorite animated movie on Netflix? Netflix original. That's the key. The story that surrounds our main duo feels familiar, but the emotional touch and theme of acceptance will win viewers over. The voice acting is excellent, and the animation is beautiful. This film as a whole was a nice surprise for me. I had a good time watching it, and again, it's a nice family watch. I'm sure there will be controversy surrounding one moment that happens at the end, but for me, I don't think this film was heavy-handed at all, and honestly, the relationships that are built up, they felt natural. So, I genuinely believe this movie did a nice job with that, and look at this little hair peeking through. This is bad. All right, I'll see you soon.